and welcome to Pink Paradox Reads. I'm Lisa, aka Pink Paradox. I read books, I watch horror movies, and I unbox stuff that has to do with books and horror movies. In this video, I'll be unboxing the October and November boxes from the Abominable Book Club. Let's get into it. The Abominable Book Club is a monthly subscription service for lovers of horror fiction. They are based in the UK, I'm in Norway, and this time around I had a double whammy of bad luck because these two boxes got stuck in customs, the October box first and then the November box. Uh, I did not get the October box until November and the November box did not take quite as long. We are still in November. But I figured I'd unbox both of them at the same time for you and find out just what is in these boxes. The October box is the heaviest one. I do believe that this is their anniversary box. They just had their second anniversary in October. We always get a new release horror or thriller book in these boxes and this time around it is actually one of my favorite books i've read so far this year so far the year is almost over my heart is a chainsaw by stephen graham jones this book is absolutely fab i know it's on a lot of favorites lists this year uh, stephen graham jones won a bunch of awards for his previous novel the only good indians and I'm pretty sure he's gonna win awards for this one as well. Very exciting too. The book comes with a signed book plate. It's a snazzy signature. My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones with a signed book plate. Stephen Graham Jones's enthralling and brilliantly written love letter to the slasher horror genre is our October anniversary featured book this year, and it's with good reason. A stunning exploration of the slasher genre with nods and references galore for all the horror buffs out there. Jones has crafted a tense and heartfelt story that deals with underlying themes of gentrification and indigenous struggles in America. It's got a bunch of gore too. So what are you waiting for? Get stuck in. Huge thanks to the author for providing us with exclusive book plates to celebrate our third anniversary third anniversary, not second. Time says a tale that will terrify you and break your heart all the same. I totally agree with that. Then we have Six Rooms by Gemma Amer. And we've had a book by Gemma Amer in the Abominable Book Club before. We had Dear Laura, the novella earlier this year. It was earlier this year, right? God, time. What a concept it's become. Six Rooms by Gemma Amer. Those of you who received Dear Laura from us before will recognize Gemma Amer as a talented upcoming voice in the genre, and she returns to the Abominable Book Club with this exceptional classic haunted house novel. Following a tour guide and his subjects as they tour a sprawlingly ghostly estate, Amer traverses classic ghost stories and adds her own uniquely poetic twist to the expected. The Sunshine Chateau comes alive through her prose, making this a vivid and scary read, perfect for Halloween. Which has come and gone, but as we've said before on this channel, Halloween is a state of mind, not just a holiday. I'm excited to read more from Gemma Amer. I really, really liked Dear Laura. We always get a snack or a treat in this boxes, and this time it is a border, which is one of my favorite brands to get milk chocolate ginger biscuits sound very very nice and good then we get a selection of hot drinks to enjoy with our books we get coffee we get hot chocolate and we get tea this off black brand has become a favorite of mine just dessert is a mint and chocolate flavor and future is pink is a black tea and it doesn't say what that tastes like the future. Then we get our bookmarks. I do have a sizable stack of bookmarks now. Uh, one for any occasion. Right now I am using the Amari Christmas bookmark because I am reading 
a bunch of Christmas horror and like Victorian ghost stories and stuff that will be featured in an upcoming video. This bookmark has flash fiction on the back and this has the tombstones of several classic horror authors. Got Edgar Allan Poe there, Mary Shelley, H.P. Lovecraft, and Abram Stoker. Just imagine the horrors they would give us if they were with us today. Then we get a pin from Abracadabra Apparel, and this time around it's Pinhead, who is trying his hand at a Rubik's Cube. That's really cute. And then in every Abominable Book Club box, there is a mystery book from the Accursed Library. These books are all packed up and sealed and then randomly inserted into the Abominable Book Club boxes. Uh, so far, I've had lots of great ones. Had a bunch of Dean Koontz, but I've also had a Ring by Koji Suzuki. I've had um, Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. I've also had a an amazing amount of Sean Hudson books. And as you may recall, uh, I got a book uh, a few boxes back that I was not too happy about. But this is a mystery, so you never know what you're going to get, right? This sounds and feels like a hardback. Let's find out. Should have brought scissors. And wouldn't you know, it's another Dean Koontz. Back when he was going as Dean R. Koontz, I still don't know the difference between these books. I think I've seen some of his books published again under just the name Dean Koontz. He was Dean R. Koontz when I was a teenager and I was reading his books. This is The Vision and I have not heard of this book before. It is a very big book in size, but as you can see, the pages could probably have been like a lot smaller. The killer standing with the butcher knife in one hand standing in shadow, his face in shadow, but turning now, turning very slowly and deliberately turning so that she'll be able to see his face, turning if he's looking for her. He knows I'm with him, she said. Who knows? He knows I'm watching. She didn't understand how that could be true, yet the killer knew about her. She was certain of that and she was scared. Mary Bergen is a clairvoyant, able to foresee murders that will happen in the near future, but unable to prevent them from taking place. And now she's up against a power that is stronger than her own, a power that is taking her over, a power that is corrupting her mind, a power that is trying to kill her before she can identify it. That sounds like a classic sort of supernaturally charged thriller from Dean R. Koontz. Dean Koontz. Whichever. I do enjoy these books. They are usually quite fast, uh, fun reads. And this will come in handy on one of those nights where I just don't know what I want to read. What I want to pick up. Alright, so that was everything that came in the October box. Now let's have a look at the November one. Our new feature release is The Children God Forgot by Graham Masterton. And we very recently had a book by Graham Masterton in the boxes. Uh, I guess he wrote another one already? Forsake the Living, Fear, Forget the Dead, Fear the Children. This is going to be a creepy kid book. Graham Masterton's second appearance in the Abominable Book Club Club comes with a special surprise for some lucky subscribers who will receive one of 200 limited edition book plates signed by Graham himself. I don't think I got one. Nope, I'm not one of the lucky 200. We are incredibly excited to receive the support and kindness of a legend of British horror whose seminal work in the pulp horror boom with titles like The Manitou and Charnel House paved the way for the genre. His latest novel included here is horrifying and heartbreaking, that's that word again, and carries all the hallmarks of classic Masterton works of the past. Hopefully not that of spirit. Then we have a horror fiction magazine, The Gastling, and I have to say, 
This is probably my favorite ever cover of theirs. Look at that, that is gorgeous. The Gaslings 14th offering is our inhabitants issue featuring tales of cabin fever, weird tenants, strange neighbors, possessed workmates, haunted children, and other uninvited inhabitants. Also includes a cut out and keep Ouija board in case you wish to make friends with that knocking sound in your airing cupboard. These magazines are absolutely beautiful. They are so well made. Love it. More snacks and goodies. The Little Wells Chocolate Co. Uh, brings us a milk chocolate, maple, and pecan. Yum, 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 yum. Milk chocolate is my favorite. More drinks. More coffee. More hot chocolate. More tea. Now with a spicy orange and ginger version. Our bookmarks. This one is Dracula themed. Listen to them. The children of the night. What music they make. Our pin from Abracadabra Apparel, this time is a Daffogorgon. He is part Demogorgon, part Daffodil. And he's pretty adorable. Now, I would absolutely love to receive like a Stephen King or an Anne Rice would be really cool or a Clive Barker. I'm guessing this is another Dean Koontz. It isn't. It's uh, an author I've never heard of. Rodney Stone, at The Dark Side of the Hill. Furnished farmhouse to let in a remote valley. Peter Fellows decides to take his teenage daughter Sandy on holiday to try to improve their rather distant relationship. Yet when they arrived, it isn't the cozy cottage Peter had hoped for. Hiding against the dark, damp Welsh hills, the cottage is filled with mysterious symbols, a cross sketched into the stonework, the tracing of a crow's foot. Then Sandy discovers the body of an old woman and shortly afterwards disappears herself. Turning to the local police for help, Peter is constantly thwarted and realizes that they see him as a prime suspect. It is only with the uneasy alliance of a touring American journalist, Laurel, that Peter is able to make any progress and what they discover is sinister beyond their wildest nightmares. From the hillsides of Wales to the polished desks of Whitehall, here is a remarkable novel of mystery, romance, and personal discovery from the author of The Chilling Cries in the Night. So this sounds more like a suspense novel maybe than a horror, but it could be fun. Let me know in the comments if you've ever read any books by Rodney Stone. All right, guys, that was everything that came in the October and November boxes from the Abominable Book Club. 
I would love to hear your opinion on the items in the boxes in the comments. Also, if you've read any of these books, I would love to hear about it. Are you as enamored with My Heart is a Chainsaw as I am? That's it for this video. If you enjoy unboxings like this one, bookish videos, and horror movie talk, I hope you stick around and subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time. Thank you.